the last couple episodes I did were, were, um, over Christmas were to do with Amity to Muscaria because of the kind of links to to Christmas. And that's something mm-hmm. that I know you've been exploring over over the last year. And it's kind of interesting because in, in the kind of literature on the links between kind of psychoactive substances and religion, the, the fly agarico amnesia muscaria mushroom comes up a lot, but I've mm-hmm. never tried it myself, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem, you know, it's not like DMT, it seems, right? It doesn't give you visions of entities, it seems, um, that readily. Uh, so I guess I'm, I'm interested in what the experience is like, and if you're, you're surprised that people claim it might have a link to kind of inspiring religion. Yeah, I, I don't see that at all. I think, you know, when you, when you have a psilocybin experience or, or ayahuasca experience, and I mean, I know you, you talked to um, the, the author of the Immortality Key, which is just a great book, so I absolutely loved it. And you can very much get this connection between the experience and kind of like the religious sort of mystical experience. It just seems, it becomes very obvious. I did not get that at all with Amanita Muscari. So I think when there's a lot of uh, stuff in the psychic community when people sort of refer to, you know, like, uh, you know, Soma or something, you know, um, this, you know, this is probably Amanita Muscari. I mean, it, I mean, it, it it was a very pleasant experience, and it was I would certainly do it do it again. Um, but I didn't get that same kind of um, feel. It, it, it's just not got that kind of trip to me in otherworldliness. To you know, the, the secrets of the universe are unlocked, sort of thing. It, it felt medicinal. It felt. Uh, I'd say more like it was kind of sedatively. There was a kind of a drunkenness to it. It was kind of fun, uh, very dreamy, but not. I I I don't think that could lead to one of these mystical experiences. Um, and granted, I'm I'm very new in this Amitam Scary space, and I'll, I'm going to do some further exploration there. But I mean, you only need to have like quite a as you know. A smallish amount of something like psilocybin or DMT to, to to sort of get the depth of the landscape there, um, and I just I don't think um, Amanita Scaria has got that same depth. And apparently, I did, I did what I've been told was quite, was quite a high dose of it, um, and I certainly, like I say, I had a very pleasant experience with it. But I don't think so. I I, I can't see the the kind of the kind of religious connections that I would expect from something like psilocybin mushrooms, but yes, it is there in all this kind of iconic um, ancient sort of artwork. So um, yeah, maybe there's maybe there's something there. Maybe there's something in the preparation that I'm sort of not aware of. Maybe it was a mix of some other stuff. I know this is talked about in in Brian's book, the Immortality Key of that. Uh, you know, a lot of these um, these potions were mixtures of lots of different things. Um, so yeah, maybe that was one of the key ingredients. Because um, it do, it is very dreamlike, um, and that's kind of that's funny to use that word because you kind of think of something like psilocybin as being dreamlike, but I think of psilocybin or like DMT as being like hyper reality. It's whereas dreams are kind of fuzzy, shifting, sort of you know, not not as not the not the same kind of thing. And uh, so, yeah, I I I personally. Don't think it is. Um, I don't think that's that's a bridge between psychedelics and religion. Yeah, I mean the the point you made about like it being one component in a potion. Yeah, you know, we we made that point earlier on in this conversation about um, lots of indigenous cultures kind of working with synergistic mixes of stuff rather than reductionistic separating separating things out. So I think it's definitely a possibility. And also in a similar vein, you know, we're used to again this kind of reductionist way of thinking where it's like I take the chemical and then I have the trip. And I don't need to prepare. It's just, you know, it does, it does the job. But I feel like if, you know, so in like Siberian shamanism where they do use this mushroom and, and it, it does, they do say that, you know, in some of these traditions that it helps them connect with the spirits of the ancestors. Perhaps if you are, you know, you're living close to nature and you're, you're living through these kind of mythologies that connect you to the, to the world around you and you're the shaman who's already been selected because you have some propensity for engaging with these states, which, you know, we know, it, the the trip isn't in the chemical the trip's in the brain the chemical just unlocks it mm-hmm. um and mm-hmm. so you can i can imagine like the the mushroom in that context just being a kind of just bumps you over the edge into this kind of 
into something that you might be already kind of tuned into um, as a as a way of being. But yeah, I feel like it it has to be something like that because it doesn't seem it's you know it, once you try something like DMT, it seems like why why wasn't this the thing that found in religion? You know, if if you told me we found we found definitive proof that um, early humans managed to somehow produce produce something like ayahuasca and they were drinking it. I would go, oh, that makes complete sense. They were literally meeting spirits and then they, they come back and they say, well, you know, they have the yeah. experience of meeting spirits and then they say, apparently spirits exist and apparently there's a spirit world because it feels very literally like that, right? Yeah, I mean, that was the, the, the kind of the hypothesis in the uh, Immortals Key, wasn't it? Like they, were, they were brewing some sort of um, LSD infused. It was coming right. from Ergo, wasn't Ergo, it? Yeah. Kind of beer. And um, it was, it was funny because I, I was in Greece for my family vacation just completely unrelated. We're just there with the family because it's one of the few places we could get to on, on vacation in uh, October. And uh, so we were doing all the tourist things of traveling around Athens and seeing all these temples. And, and they're magnificent. And uh, I, you know, the, the thought was coming to me like, what makes a culture do this? You know, you see, you see the same thing when you, if you go to pyramids or Machu Picchu or whatever. This, it takes some doing. You, you could be doing anything else. You know, you, some king, you could be, you know, building a new palace or waging war or whatever. What makes you do this? Just build some colossal monument to something sacred. Because uh, these, are, these are no small feats of, of, of engineering or, or, you know, or you know, just labor even. And so then when you, you sort of, you, you know, there's this connection made between, you know, a culture which, which uses psychedelic. And when you, you know, you, you have these kind of, you know, one of these experiences, and one of the first things that, that came to me, one of my earliest DMT experiences, was just Aztec pyramids. I was just seeing Aztec pyramids all over the place, and Aztec sort of Inca writing, and I was again not, not primed for that particular. Um, so yeah, I, I, I can sort of, I can see uh, how that there is a culture that is using these kind of, you know, these kind of portions or, or something to, to get into these states, and then that what they're trying to do is, is recreate what they are seeing in the thing that the the thing they are building physically is to try and get closer to you know the thing that they've they've seen sort of spiritual psychedelically and that vision has to be so powerful to motivate them to do that you know and i think that's where amanita muscaria falls short it's it's not got the kick that would make me go and start building pyramids or start building you know, temples up on a, you know, carting marble from five miles away to make some sort of temple to Athena or something. I just, I just don't see it. So I, that's why I was kind of so interested in, in, in Brian's book. Cause it, that makes a lot of sense to me that there would be some, some kind of trip to mean based on something that's going to send you to this hyper reality, which you're then going to build this entire culture of, you know, the, the, the greater mysteries. I mean, even when you sort of, when you've, when you've had a psychedelic experience and someone says like the greater mysteries, you, you just get it instantly. Oh, I know what they're talking about. It's, it, yeah, of <laughs> course, it's, it, it is the mysteries of the universe. And I think this, this, you know, how they, this whole culture is built around it and like they have this kind of like year long sort of indoctrination to, to get to this point where, where you can deal with the mysteries. I think, you know, ties into this whole idea of the psychedelic renaissance. We, we've got psychedelics exploding onto our kind of, you know, into our world scene at the moment. And we don't have this kind of Peruvian traditional framework, and we don't have this kind of long lost Greek, the greater mysteries framework, but it's kind of happening anyway. And I think maybe this is something we perhaps need to try and get back or come up with some, somehow. Because I think it's one thing to have, you know, a, uh, say, like a, a psilocybin. Uh, sort of center where you can go and do it under, under clinical conditions. I think that's, that's a brilliant thing. And I'm sort of, I'm glad that, that exists, but I think I, yeah, I, I don't know whether that fully covers what I think we can only really describe as, as the sort of the spiritual aspect to it or the sort of the preparation aspect to it. It doesn't necessarily give you this kind of an integration framework. It just, it just means you have that experience in a very, very sort of safe way and maybe you know you, you could sort of attack some amount of like therapy around it you know like after but i don't know if that's necessarily gives you the same thing as, as what i gather from these kind of like these, these greater mysteries of where you've spent a, a year building up to what you are aware is going to be the most monumentous experience of your life and then you have it 
and then it would it kind of feels like that would make sense then whereas i think yeah it, we, we kind of we just don't have that at all at the moment so i think we need to catch up a bit so i'm it's one of the reasons I really got, got my teeth into this book and I loved the, uh, the interview that you, that you did with, with Brian there. I think, I mean, what, what was your sort of take on all that? Did, did, you, yeah, did you find it plausible? Yeah, I mean, I, Brian's book was excellent. So it's Brian Rescue, The Immortality Key. And, and yeah, I find his stuff extremely plausible. I think the idea that, the idea that early humans were using um, naturally occurring psychedelics like mushrooms or perhaps other things like ergot in, in potions um, seems very, very plausible to me. Um, it seems it seems almost impossible that that they wouldn't have had some knowledge of these mushrooms that had profoundly psychoactive yeah. effects. And it's a it's a it's a well as well. It's a well known theory, um, very respected theory uh, in the kind of origins of of cave art and religion that psychedelics may have been involved. So I, I think that's very, very plausible and that yeah, everything adds up in the way Brian presents it that these um, these Greek ceremonies were kind of a, a throwback to that, like kind of saying, let's remember these traditions. You know, he kind of points mm-hmm. out that like, it's, it's, it's all to do with kind of agriculture and brewing beer. And it's, it's not, you know, the Greeks are, and, and you don't write it down or talk about it, but the Greeks are known for like wine and writing. So it seems like it's a very different thing. And beer brewing, brewing is much more ancient than wine, wine um, making. And so, yeah, I think the idea that it was carried through and that these Greek ceremonies m- may have had some influence on Christianity, and that's what the wine is, and um, Jesus' wine. Um, that I think he presents extremely well, and is very plausible. Um, but yeah, a lot of what you said actually um, is a, a bunch of things we've said in this conversation that reflects on something I've been thinking about and working on a lot recently, which is that you know, you mentioned my, my consciousness theory earlier, and in that the kind of core idea is that that. Consciousness is is fundamentally to do with emotion because it's to do with survival. It's to do with kind of feeling your way out in the world and existing moment to moment. So I've been playing around with this idea that, you know, when someone has a kind of DMT experience and they become obsessed with building a new cosmology, building a new picture of reality, whether it's that we're in a simulation, we're a biotechnological experiment by aliens, God exists and communicates with us through DMT, like all of these different worldviews, people get very passionate. It triggers this passionate need to kind of figure out the structure of reality. And my, my instinct is that that's to do with this like emotional um, role that consciousness plays. You, know, you build up a sense of reality to make you feel safe and help you navigate the world. Then you, ha- you basically have your mind do the most astonishing things it can do. And then you try to incorporate that into your picture of the world. And so I feel like when we see people become convinced of the existence of aliens because of their DMT experiences, which, you know, to be fair, are astonishingly, can be astonishingly alien. Like, you know, like I have no inter- interest in aliens and UFOs. And then suddenly I'm being abducted and I'm on a, on a table with these things seemingly doing experiments on me. And I'm like, oh, apparently that's the thing my brain can do. <laughs> or, I, didn't, I didn't know that was in there. Um, so anyway, but, um, yeah, so I, I think the, um, what we're seeing is almost like a, that, that spark that that's led to, to humans being different to other animals, to having religion and art and, and yeah, these kind of religious cosmological pictures of the world. I think we're seeing people individually have that again through psychedelics. I, and I think psychedelics may have been, you know, altered states may have been the thing that sparked it in early humans. And, and so it, it gives me this, um, I think it's exciting that, that you know, we're, that's a, a, a positive way of, of, of looking at people who get obsessed with, with the kind of figuring out, you know, well, what is, what is the nature of reality that, that explains this? Um, it's kind of like we're really getting in touch with something very fundamental of what it means to be human. But at the same time, the risk of that is that it becomes hard to stand outside of it. And, you know, you, if you're in it and you're building that worldview, it's fulfilling such a it's fulfilling an emotional role and making you feel you know feel good in the world in a certain way feel that reality is actually really exciting because aliens are involved or you mm. know your life has meaning because there's a god and there's an afterlife or whatever it is that that resonates with the individual it, can, it becomes hard to step outside of yourself and see your own psychological biases because consciousness you know you're in it and you're you're building it it feels you're kind of you're feeling your way through in a way that feels good so that's the trick, I think, is to to try and take both those perspectives. You know, like like for someone like me as well, like 
I'm not just doing the science thing and standing outside and saying it has to be 100% the existing paradigm. It has to be just the brain and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to not do that whilst not getting lost and saying, hey, like when I'm in the DMT trip, it feels like that this isn't the real world, that's the real world and it's some weird joke and, you know, it, it feels mm. that way. So you have to kind of have those two yeah have those two sides the feeling part um, you know there's part of me <laughs> you could say there's part of me that knows the dmt experience is real but that isn't the part of me you would call james or or, or my rational mind or you know the part that has the ability to to say well actually it feels real but it's probably not but that that feeling part is in there so it's um yeah i think we're we're rediscovering something really fundamental about being human but there are some kind of risks that go along with that i guess yeah it's it's a funny balance in that because on, on the one hand the, you know, there's this kind of like where, where I kind of lean towards is, is this kind of like on what I guess it's kind of like Buddhist sort of worldview. Of, it's you know you just kind of it just accept it. This this is your human experience, and you know again, does it really matter if it's aliens? Just you know, just have the best possible human experience that you can have, and you know, don't get too obsessive over, over these things because uh, you know it, it can often you know not lead to something productive. But then on the other hand. There is something just intrinsically fun and awesome about this kind of curiosity. It's like, it's like it just the the joy of the of the mystery and the and the, the the weirdness of like you know thinking about these aliens or these con or some of these concepts that just come which just hadn't occurred to you pre psychedelics. They're so fun to explore that it's almost kind of like tragic to just to say tomorrow well none of it matters you know to just go and you know be a human being so there's yeah i think that that's the kind of the kind of that the balance that we that we have to sort of find in that you know i am so grateful that there are people like yourself do, doing the science and sort of trying to sort of figure it out but then again on the other hand it's like it's you know it, it's not going to change anything about my personal experience and i think that's that's the kind of the, the healthy level that we've got to get to of we you know have explore whatever concepts in whatever way in a way that is productive whether it's productive in that it's fun or whether it's productive in that it's you know expanding our knowledge in some way but at the sort of the end of the day just it, it's you cannot you, you cannot live com sort of completely over there. No more than you can live completely in this like non-dual experience. You 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 are, you are a human being. You have got to have get the best out of this. And it also it kind of comes into conflict a little bit with one of the kind of the, the key sort of tropes in, in psychedelics is that you know we are the universe experiencing itself as matter. And and I, I think that's that's a, a beautiful statement. It's something I think we can all sort of you know relate to. But if that's true you know even if you go into the full-on sort of like god speak or sort of non-dual speak and that you know we are all god and that the only reason that we are experiencing individuality is because god wanted to know and understand what it was like to be separate or or to understand what it was like to be matter then that's our role that's our job get on with it you know you're going to be god anyway it's gonna you know you've already been god you're going to go back to god so to get lost in 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 trying to transplant that into this human experience um just for the kind of for the, for the sake of i think he's, he's kind of missing the point somewhat i think we should i think we should dial into these experiences and use them and have fun with them and expand our you know our understanding things and, and use it to sort of just get through a lot of the you know the stuff that our modern life dumps on us um but we don't get lost in it. I think that that's the thing. And I've, you know, whether it's people who get lost in conspiracy theories, like you know, the aliens are fun. But if if you are sort of checking every corner for aliens, then I, I think you're probably you know taking it a little bit too far. And, and same with the god stuff. I think I think I can understand it must be very you know that feeling of oneness is very reassuring. That feeling of being bathed in just the love of the cosmos is is amazing. But then again, to sort of take it too far is is kind of can can be destructive. So that's, I think that's kind of where we're at as, as a, a culture. And um, yeah, I think, I think the more conversations we can have around these things, honestly and openly, then the better we have chance we have of kind of balancing those scales. Yeah, I think 
I spoke with Joseph Goldstein, who's one of the, the people who bought mindfulness meditation to oh, the yeah. West, and and he um he basically made exactly the same point where he was saying that he sees he said metaphysics as skillful means, which kind of means you know like your picture of reality should basically be in the service of you f- like living a good life, feeling. In I guess mm-hmm. he would talk talk about in terms of psychological freedom and and freedom from suffering. And I think that's really wise. You know, if if you're if you're caught in your like, I have to get the story. The story I'm telling myself has to be the right one of the structure of reality. You probably yeah. would would do well just to to look and see. Well, where's all this anxiety and fear and or like unease coming from? Can I feel a bit more grounded and be like, yeah, it's fun to think about this stuff, but not everything hangs on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just I just sort of always try and sort of yeah encourage people just 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 be sort of grounded. Have have fun with these concepts, but. You know, if if you if it sort of means everything to you that the Earth is flat, then yeah, maybe it's time to chill out a little. Yeah.